far from everyone. Huddled in a corner of the club are Betty and her priest. I've never asked her why she brings her priest to shows, but he's always there. I know they're very close. They're sort of dating, spiritually. And they never miss a show. It's funny, like every day is bring your grandma and her priest to work day. Betty can't even pronounce the name of the band. She says that throwing muses is too many syllables. I told her Betty Hutton has just as many, but she ignored me. Tonight, Betty's hair is gold, and she's wearing her blue cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. Her priest is dressed as a priest. The two of them lean against the back wall of the club, talking. Betty has gigantic sunglasses on because she doesn't like being recognized. Now that I know her deep, weird need for stardom, I act like a tiny bodyguard when I'm with her, shielding her from invisible autograph hounds wherever we go, as I'm sure her priest is doing now. I think this has backfired a little. She now believes fans are everywhere, at school, at the beach, at Dunkin' Donuts. I have to buy our coffees in the morning. She's so scared to be seen. It's strange. She's no fading flower. She's really loud, but unusually fragile. She seems to love the idea of fans and hate the fans themselves, or else she's just afraid of them. Of course, there are no fans. This minor detail hasn't dented her persona a bit. Betty is a movie star through and through. When we play gay bars, she and her priest look like a couple of nifty drag queens, but in this dismal rock club, they look small and lonely, out of place. It's sad that this is their big Friday night out on the town. There are probably better things for an old lady and her priest to do on a Friday night. But Betty thinks she has to come to all of our shows because I need help, sort of true. She says I'm a reluctant performer, also true, and that she can learn me up to sparkle. This will never happen. According to her, one more thing she and I have in common is music. This is wholly psychotic. Betty grew up in the golden age of Hollywood, back when movies were Broadway on film, so her idea of music is singing as entertainment, and you can't call what I do singing or entertainment. I hiss and yell and wail, Sometimes I make seagull noises, unfortunately. Music is something I have almost no control over, like well-rehearsed Tourette's. When Betty sings, she sits at a piano and says lovely things about hope and broken hearts. I often sing phonetically, as if I don't speak English. The words climb out of my throat and into my mouth, then I have to spit them out. Betty sings about starlight and champagne. I sing about dead rabbits. When I say playing music is owning violence, she says it's owning love. When I say it's math, she says it's tap dancing. When I say it's my gun, she says it's her dance card. I've also noticed that she sings notes that go with the chords in her songs. I have yet to do that. It sounds pretty when Betty does it, it sounds boring and goofy when I do it. So I make up new notes, ones that don't belong anywhere near the chords I'm playing, and I sing those. People must think, it's so nice of them to let that deaf girl sing. Certain things I love Spend my time I guess I'll have to unhook those hooks This woman literally
your own life stays the same She has a hook in her head She has a hook in her head So 